Uh, first of all, uh, I thought I didn't, I didn't expect to follow up from such a philosophical talk. Um, unfortunately, I feel like I'm very Singaporean and my talk, I'm trying to like teach something and do something and I feel quite like out of place now. Um, I'm hoping to um, teach people who use CSS and maybe if you have something like this in your job, um, hopefully we can help you out. Um, anyways, uh, like Hui Jing said, thank you. Uh, I am from Carousel. Uh, just a quick like, bio by myself. Um, actually, like many guys, I feel I started out programming because I wanted to do game development and then I sort of if anybody has tried, it kind of sucks. Um, and so I did three internships, then I started applying everywhere, and everyone like sort of said, oh yeah, um, first of all, you don't have enough experience like DigiPen people, and we want to pay you like a third of what other normal software engineers pay. Anyways, you know, it's a story for another time, but um, it is what it is. I've been at Carousel doing web development. Uh, it does React for the past 1.5 years. But uh, moving into what um, uh, the talk is about, so recently, uh, Carousel has been uh, privileged enough that uh, we've been putting more focus on the web because, um, and one of the focuses is to make sure that our UI looks good, looks consistent and stuff like this. So we're creating, uh, I know the hot thing these days are web components and we are doing that. Uh, we created this thing called a Carousel Design System. This is the most boring name ever, but it is what it is. Um, and what it is is that um, all your UI elements will look the same. And um, so you only need to write it once. So every time you have a button, every time you have an input text, even every time you have a checkbox or whatever, it'll look the same. And it'll save you time uh, because it, first of all, it'll make it look better. Second of all, um, we get to save time. We, don't, we make sure that all the things are behave the same. So how come this button got cursor pointer? How come this button doesn't have cursor pointer? By doing this, we make sure that all of them have cursor pointer. And lastly, we can save time sometimes. If the like, input text is an error, we don't need to render our own error like message, right, if it's part of the input text component. Um, there's actually a very fun uh, talk done by Issue uh, during JSConf about this, but this talk is not about it, it's far shorter. Um, I just wanted to show you how cool, um, uh, how put together Carousel is. This is, uh, this is what my designer, my, my web designer gave me. So it gives you a certain idea. First of all, it gives you like, wow, Carousel is so cool, you got all this stuff like that. But also, so like the drop down, this is what it looks like normally, you know what it looks like. What happens with the hover? All the colors are like standard colors. There's an error state, there's a disabled state. Um, there's, uh, there's paddings and margins, and then there's this thing. Um, what I wanted to focus on actually today is the, this thing. So uh, my designer said, hey, Dylan, I want you to uh, design the radio and the checkbox this way. And um, the thing is that the, the radio chop box, first of all, if you know the, pre the original one is kind of ugly, it's small, and you can't, and, and, and it doesn't look like this at all. Um, and how do we do that? And there's like, uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, right? How do I do that? So immediately, first thing I do is I Google, how do I change the color of radio buttons to, to use carousel blue, the brand blue, right? And then first uh, answer on Stack Overflow is uh, radio button is native element, blah, and you cannot change the color or the size. Uh, and I'm like, what? Okay, um, how do I do that? Um, that's so weird. So I've prepared this code sandbox. Um, and so what I have here is this, uh, these checkboxes. What happens if I just try to put the thing on? So what happens is that it doesn't, it's, it's exactly what Stack Overflow says. Um, it is this. It doesn't work. And um, crap, you know? And, and, and so then, uh, you know, you start looking at the next Stack Overflow answers. And one of them actually, um, uh, start saying about the studio elements. But before that, uh, I want to give you a quick uh, input for people who are, I mean, we're all hopefully some, something to do with HTML and web. Uh, and I hope that people know the difference between the first and the second. So I'm going to show you the difference. So here I have your demo. Uh, oh, sorry, let me put the, take away this. I don't really want this. So it looks normal. Okay. So what is this? So here, let's say you do the input and you do the type radio. Oh, yeah. And then after that, you put, you know, vanilla. Cool. So what's the difference between the first vanilla and the second vanilla? The first one is what I don't recommend, which is um, uh, not inside the label. And the second one uh, is the label example. So if you click on this, this is a text. If you click on this, this is part of the input. If you click on it, it is, um, you know, uh, if some people want to click on the radio and then you click on the text, then at least you can change the um, option. So it's the difference, and I hope that you know if you. One of the things that I want to make sure people do is that you properly style your um, input stuff, and you can put your label this way. Okay, um, hold on, give me a sec. I forgot something in my bag. This is not part of the talk. I literally forgot. Okay, uh, so um, 
um, how do I create this thing for my web designer? So there's two ways to go about it. Um, one of this is uh, use a div or a button for the radio component. So I'll be focusing on radio. Uh, I'll give you an example of how we do checkbox later. Um, one of it is to just do a div or a button and then just style the hell out of it. Just remove everything, gut everything, and make it look like a radio. Um, the, the good point is that it will look exactly what it should look like. And the bad point is that uh, I think there are quite a few bad points. Um, first of all, um, there are a lot of out-of-the-box browser stuff that gives you good stuff. One of it is like the name prop. One of it is that when you submit the form, all, you just grab all the inputs and throw it together. Um, you have to put an on-click handler to the label, which is what I showed just now. And another thing is accessibility. So uh, I don't know how often we care about accessibility, but when you... Um, when, when a screen reader comes and the person is blind and can't see, um, if you style your own div, then he will just see it's a div. It doesn't know it's a clickable element. But if you just leave it as an input, then a input type radio, then it's still there. But of course, the problem is that we still don't know how to modify the input radio. And that's what the talk is about today, which is to use before and after, which are CSS pseudo elements. Just a quick background. Uh, some people ask me what pseudo elements are. Um, so it's like dot. Let's say the, cl the class is foo, right? So dot foo is the actual CSS element. Pseudo is like fake, so you sort of add stuff to it, like before or after. It's the first or last thing. So because I'm using before and after, it's the first thing that's not... Uh, the f it artificially adds a thing before uh, the input. Okay, so let's do a demo. So right now, uh, as you saw just now already, I gave a sneak peek. We have this... Um, this, this input. So this is uh, your run-of-the-mill input. It's exactly what I showed just now. This label and this input. Um, you can do this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to use pure CSS. Well, after this to um, make it look better. Okay. Um, so what I have here is this uh, styles thing. Right now it's empty. Uh, I'm going to throw this away because we don't need it. And um, so I'm going to put the radio. Uh, as a before and after to the... Can zoom in. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to just throw this. Can I throw this away? Uh, it's very small. Cool. Um, I'm going to make the... I'm going to add a... Is this big enough? Cool. I'm going to do something like this. Okay. I'm going to make the... Uh, put a before and after uh, in the label, which means that... Because if you remember, this is not a label had a label, and then the child was an input, which means that before the input, there will be a radio, uh, and after, there will also be a, a part of the radio. So um, I'm going to do a, a label before. This kind is position absolute. Um, top, uh, zero pixels. Left, zero pixels. So um, if we use SCSS, it will be very nice that we can just do the um, variables. But of course, um, I'm, not use, I, I'm, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible with as little packages as possible. So I'll be using the CSS uh, var. This is what it looks like. I, um, you can actually have variables in your CSS. Um, of course, since it's position absolute, your parent needs to be position relative. Uh, yeah, and for some reason, it's still not appearing. Because uh, for your CSS before and after, you're going to need uh, a content and border two pixels solid gray. Okay, there, finally. Uh, so it took a lot of lines, but there's generally, um, we have finally this border thing. So it's not interactive at all, um, and, but we finally have a border. And of course, uh, my designer gave me a border radius of 50. It's only one, uh, it's only one, it's only one variable, so it's kind of boring. But I mean, we got the idea. And um, cool. Let's do the um, so let's do the checked one. So um, I've I've already created a class checked, and if it's checked, you do border color. What was the CSS color? Steel blue. Try steel blue. So when you select on it, you notice that uh, we've got something going on. The um, CSS before uh, turns blue if it's checked. So th this is just a CSS class that I plug in uh, with React uh, when it's checked. Okay, um, there's of course still the center thing, like the, the black thing there. So I'm going to use after to style that. After. And let me just copy, because a bunch of these are the same. But instead of using border, I'll do... Um, I'll do... 
uh, yeah, background, but the background only appears when it's checked. So uh, it's after here. Background. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so we've got we've got we've got thing. It's positioned wrongly, but you know it's it's there. So we just uh, we need to add. I've I've done some uh, calculation. We need to do a calc, and we do a minus four pixels, and we do minus four pixels. Cool, and it's oh okay. Uh, so we can still see the underlying um, input. So we just uh, set the input to uh, invisible. Uh, opacity zero. Cool. Ah, okay. Now we've got so we've we've got we've got something that's very almost exactly what um, my designer has wanted, and this is what it looks like. So um, there are some things I want to point out here. Um, I've been clicking on the labels to um, sort of change it. Of course, we can click on the. Um, the before and after as well. It's because it's part of the label. If it's part of the label, when you click on it, you'll select it. Another thing is that you notice I'm using opacity zero, not display none, uh, not visibility hidden, because uh, I want it to be part of the DOM. It's for the screen reader accessibility uh, things as well. So there's a lot of things that, um, a lot more things we can do to make it more polished. For example, right now you notice the padding's a bit uh, off. We can definitely add padding, uh, but like, so we've got other things to work with as well. Like for example, we can add a transition uh, border color. 0.5 ETH. And here, we'll do background. And um, now, it can see that it fades in and looks a lot more professional as if uh, Carousel is, uh, some the engineers at Carousel know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, so um, I just want to show you that, you know, um, most people don't know what before and after is for. And actually, personally, I still don't know what before and after is for. But I know it can be used for one thing, and it can be used for this. It's uh, one of the ideas, uh, one of the recommendations that Stack Overflow had, and it didn't give me the whole solution, but I sort of played around with it. And, you did, and, and we can use CSS to do cool things. Uh, I just wanted to show you, uh, the, I chose the radio because the radio is the simpler one. But uh, I want to show you what um, the, all the carousel, all the carousels radios look exactly like that. But, um, uh, Oh crap! I can't. Okay. Um, I need to. I, I can't show you the checkbox right now for whatever reason. Maybe it's a VPN thing. But um, the you can do the same thing with your checkboxes. Um, you can you can you can do the same thing with checkboxes, and you can style the outside and the inside. And uh, that's how I think that I recommend people do uh, style their checkboxes and their radios if you need it. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much.